Thank you so much. So here's what I'm going to cover off over the period of time that you'll see me here. Uh, I want to explain just what the Canadian Chemicals Management Plan is all about. It is our preferred alternative to the EU REACH program. Um, and I've, I've, I've engaged in a lot of um, lively debate over uh, the, the, the pros and cons of the Canadian system and the pros and cons of the REACH system. Um, and so hopefully as, as I present the information to you, you can make up your own mind. Key elements of the, the holistic chemicals management plan in Canada is, as I pointed out, we were looking at uh, categorizing and prioritizing the assessment of those existing substances that were grandfathered onto the DSL. Under the Food and Drugs Act, we are in the process of, of developing environmental assessment regulations, which is why under our new substances program, unlike most other countries in the world, where Food and Drug Act regulated materials are exempt, in Canada they are not. Um, until such time as these environmental regulations uh, come out. We have now mandatory ingredient labeling of cosmetics. We're going back and looking at some of our older pesticides and reevaluating those. Biomonitoring, surveillance and research, they're actually taking blood samples from, from uh, volunteers in Canada and looking for uh, chemicals of interest. And of course that drives a lot of media interest. Uh, the interpretation of the data is still subject to a lot of controversy, but it does tell you that they are looking at, at monitoring uh, exposure levels and, and uh, matching that up with the hazard data that they're collecting. Um, in Canada, because we are uh, a net importer of chemicals, we rely heavily on international collaborations. And then where it's warranted, and this is important, we just don't regulate because you know, we're, we're, we're interested in um, um, you know, regulation per se, it's where it's warranted, then restrictions, whether they are regulatory or non-regulatory, whether they are specific to the notifier or specific to anybody who traffics in that particular chemical, uh, the regulations, we have our, our, our rules are written in a fashion that allows for very targeted control where it's needed, but also broad blanket control uh, where it's likewise needed. So we have, we have a great degree of flexibility in our program. So I would encourage you, if you're watching those domestic substances list uh, um, search entries, you type a CAS number into a search engine and it tells you, yes, it's on the DSL. A word of caution, because there might be now a little flag or some restriction in it that says, yes, it's on the DSL, but it's subject to a restriction now that says, but before you start importing it, you have to go talk to the federal government first. So on the DSL no longer automatically means unrestricted, unlimited access to the Canadian marketplace. So a heads up there. We're seeing a trend now towards moving, and we see this globally actually, towards chemicals in products, assessing chemicals in products. What's the likelihood that a product may release a particular chemical during its use or during its end of life uh, decommissioning, and whether or not the uh, material uh, that's coming out of that product is of concern. So we're seeing surveys now that even though you bring a finished good in there, is the chemical present in that finished good? For complex global manufacturing supply chains, it's a bit of a nightmare to answer that question. We've been struggling a little bit with the polymer approach. Polymers are a tough beast to group, you know, low molecular weight versions of a polymer that is defined by the same CAS number as a high molecular weight version of the same CAS number, and you know, the risks might be different. And I want to turn your attention now to new substances, and there have been about... Uh, we think about 5,000 or 6,000 chemicals and polymers that have since been added to that grandfathered list under the new substances notification program. It is similar to the, the REACH program or, or other systems that, like Australia for example, it is tiered based on number of kilograms uh, per year or um, that, that uh, you want to send into Canada. Um, that the greater the quantity that you want to introduce into Canada, the greater the amount of information you're going to have to put forward in order to satisfy the information requirement. I will point out, unlike the US system, unlike the Australia system, unlike the EU system, the Canadian Federal New Chemicals Program does not focus on occupational risk assessment. So coming close to the end, the, um, somebody was asking me, like, how do you get a substance on the DSL? Here you go. Um, the highest level notification has been submitted. The assessment period for that notification has expired. There are none of those ministerial conditions. And the government has received the, no the notifier's notice of excess quantity or a NOMI. If you 
go over the highest quantity, so let's say in that red box, 10,000 kilograms, you have to submit just a letter saying, hi, Mr. and Mrs. Government, I've gone over 10,000 kilograms. Here, this represents my notice of excess quantity. If, however, you're, you want to put it on the DSL, you filed the highest level notification, but let's say you're a fragrance manufacturer and doing 10,000 kilograms of fragrance is awesome good business, but probably unachievable, you can elect to go with a notice of manufacturer import that says you have commenced. So you're, you know, you've, you've acknowledged that the material is actually now in Canada. And so as long as you've met all the other three criteria, you can use this alternative to the notice of excess quantity and submit a letter saying I've commenced importer manufacture. The takeaway here is this. The Canada is a net importer of chemicals, um, often proprietary mixes, so it requires sort of a collaborative approach and support from, from the entire supply chain. There are ways as foreign manufacturers to support your customers by providing information directly to the federal government so that your customers don't see it uh, if that's not what you're, you're uh, looking for. Um, but I would encourage you to caref carefully monitor and, and respond to the changes and challenges, especially in the Canada's uh, um, uh, chemicals management plan, where decisions about existing chemicals are being made. I have to tell you, and again, I come back to a few beers and, and some he a lively debate over whether, you know, the CMP versus REACH, who's going to, who, where, where, where's the pros and cons. Um, but we saw Australia. Um, decide to uh, um, look into the Canadian approach and, and their priority chemicals program is looking more Canadian than European and we see that US EPA is calling us to say hey we want to learn more about um, um, what, what you've done in Canada to save ourselves some effort. effort. So thank you. I think I'm um, pretty close and we'll take questions at the end. <laughs>